King Jesus is coming back. And one of these days, I'm looking at the people that's going to be reigning in the kingdom of God. Now, don't bow your head and say, oh, no, not me. Yes, you. That's Bible. You suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. I said the saints of God be inside those gates and in that, and in that place. Saints are going to be elevated. And with no sin and no saint, nothing but good, no evil. Wow. Then chapter 21, verse 21, the sights will be enjoyed. Can you imagine one gate 1,500 mile high? I did just a little bit of math, and I, I didn't have time to let Mike Burry back there uh, check me out, but 1,500 miles, that city alone is square. If one corner of New Jerusalem was sitting in Chicago, the other corner would be down in Miami. Can you imagine? Basically, half the size of the continental United States is one city. <laughs> and that's 1,500 miles means of, of a golden street. And then if you go north to south and east to west, goodness, it's, it's something like 45 million miles of gold and transparent avenues just on the first floor. And then if you square it out with, with those multiple dimensions like 67 billion uh, uh, streets, 2 trillion room, if you just put one mansion on each corner of room for over something like 2 trillion mansions, he said in my father's house, are men, there's going to be plenty of elbow room over there. We're going somewhere. You talk about sights. Eddie had an experience when he almost died up in Baltimore. He come back and told me about it. He said, I was outside that city and I couldn't see the top of the wall. I told him, I said, I don't reckon you could. The thing ain't but 1,500 mile high. <laughs> you say, do you believe in that cop stuff? I believe God can show you whatever God wants to show you when you get down there. But I want you to know you talk about sights. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. What gets you is, you know, a lot of people don't like emotionalism, and I understand that. And if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to worship God like Charlie. You don't have to worship God like me. But let me promise you something on this morning. When you get to heaven, the voice came out from the throne and said, Praise ye our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And it sounded like mighty thunderings, people saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. I haven't seen my precious little granny since 1983. Saw her over there at the ICU in the old uh, Smith County Community Hospital and kissed her on the forehead and, and told her I'd see her. And little did I know that that'd be the last time I'd see her alive. That was 1983. One of these days when I see that big old 1,500-mile gate, I ain't going to pay no attention to that thing. Maybe one pearl, one pearl. You ain't going to pay no attention to that because there are people inside those gates that you haven't seen in a long time. And the last time you saw them, they may have been holler-eyed, gate mouth, looked like death. But I promise you, Ain't going to look like that the next time you see it. I can call names all around this room, and I don't want to bring up hurt feelings. But Linda, little Jamie's been doing fine all these years. And one of these days, we're going to see him again. <laughs> I'd like to be close by when I see Linda's face. You're going to see your mommy again. You're going to see your dad, your brother, your sister. They're going to be there. And there's going to be peace and no sin, no Satan. Saints elevated, sights enjoyed. But down in the middle of town, 750 miles down a pure, transparent, golden boulevard, the place of God, and what that means is, is just perfection and peace. There's a throne. And there's a spring of the water of life it rushes out from the smitten rock and the spray from that pure water and the light that's there on the throne goes through that spray making the most beautiful rainbow that you've ever seen predominantly green welcoming us old inhabitants of earth home and then it's scarlet crimson like red that's redemption Eternal. 
And I want you to pause just a second. And there's a man on that throne. And he stands to his feet with outstretched arms. And he says to you, welcome. And you'll see him. The one who died for you. The one who lives for you. The one who helped you when no one else could. The one who was your comfort in sorrow, your joy in sorrow, your peace in turbulence. The one that never left you. The one that was so patient and long-suffering with you that he never cast you out and he never turned his back on you. The one that was with you always. Ain't that going to be something? When you see him as he is and the splendor of all of that will be forever. 22 verse 5, it ends with this. Forever and ever and ever. It'll take a gazillion years just to see everything once. <laughs> Somebody dared say one time heaven will be boring. <laughs> it's the absolute opposite of that. <laughs> it costs the Lord everything to get us there. So how good do you think it's going to be? It's not entered your mind or my imagination what it could be. You remember some of you, I told you what happened to me one night when I was in a lot of pain with an old kidney stone and Janet gave me a pain pill. And what it seemed like for just a minute or two had been like hours and she finally woke me up and I got aggravated at her for waking me up because me and Jesus is on the other side over there. <laughs> and wasn't nobody but me and him. I got to thinking, Jody, I said, I've never seen such a beautiful place, Lord, but I got something on my mind here. See, I never seen him face to face. I just knew it was him beside me, Bill. And I know it was a dream, and I don't put a lot of stock in dreams. But I remember thinking so strongly, Bimbo Blevins might have thought I was a pretty good fellow, but I can't be this good. I surely ain't the only one that made it to heaven because there wasn't nobody there but me and the Lord. <laughs> I couldn't figure that out. So I remember asking the Lord, where is everybody? He said, oh, you want to be with everybody else? I said, yeah, kind of like to see some folks. He said, well, the deal is you're like me over here, and I'm omnipotent. I brought you into the family, and I never thought about that. Been to Bible college and everything else, never heard of that concept. I said, what do you mean? He said, you can be anywhere you want to at the same time or multiple times or whatever. You want to go downtown and see everybody? Or if you want to just be out here with me, you're just like me now. And I said, Lord, be nice to see everybody. In an instant, our band here is good, but I ain't never heard no music like that. And there was throngs of people, and it's all glorifying Jesus. And the peace was amazing. There was absolutely no worry. Absolutely no stress. And about that time, somebody got shaking on my shoulder. You all right? <laughs> Looked up there and there's my wife. I said, daggone you. <laughs> I was getting ready to join in the singing. She said, well, I just want to make sure you was all right. <laughs> I said, I'm better than all right. <laughs> I don't know if that was real or if that's just a dream, but I'll tell you one thing. I can't explain how good it's going to be. But I can tell you this, it's going to be forever. There won't be no car wrecks. There won't be no suicides. There won't be any cancer. There won't be any stress. There won't be any drug runners and dope pushers. All of that will be far behind. Inside those gates and in the place that's prepared for you. Now listen to me. If you want that place, you've got to trust Christ. And one of the greatest things he wants us to do is not be ashamed of him. So as of yet, if you're not a Christian, you need to take care of that today. By walking down this aisle and saying publicly, I'm taking Christ as my Savior. And before you ever take a step back there, as you take that first step, 
he'll write your name down. And you'll feel so much better. The first step's hard, but all the rest of them are easy. And one of these preachers will get with you up here to altar, one of these Christian ladies. And they'll show you what the Bible says, not what we think, but what God says. For faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And in a moment, you can be forever changed, saved by the grace of God. And know that one day you can too can stand within the gates and see your place.